In the annals of West African history, the name Empire Ghana resonates as a testament to a bygone era of flourishing trade, cultural exchange, and imperial grandeur. Situated in the heart of what is now modern-day Mauritania and Mali, this ancient empire, also known as the Wagadu Empire, left an indelible mark on the region. As we embark on this exploration, we journey back in time to unravel the enigmatic origins, the rise to power, the intricate socio-cultural landscape, and the enduring legacy of Empire Ghana. Join us as we navigate the labyrinth of history, piecing together fragments of archaeological discoveries, scholarly insights, and the whispers of a once-flourishing kingdom. Empire Ghana beckons us to rediscover the forgotten chapters of Africa's past, where the convergence of trade routes, diverse ethnicities, and the march of time shaped the destiny of a remarkable empire. Empire Ghana's geographical location proved pivotal to its rise. Positioned strategically between the Sahara Desert and the tropical forests to the south, Ghana became a crossroads for trans-Saharan trade. The empire's access to abundant natural resources, including gold mines in the south and salt deposits in the north, laid the foundation for its economic prosperity. The trans-Saharan trade routes, facilitated by the introduction of the camel, became arteries through which precious goods flowed. Gold, sought after by North African and Mediterranean traders, was exchanged for the indispensable commodity of salt, essential for preserving food in the tropical climate. This economic symbiosis propelled Empire Ghana into a position of prominence, establishing it as a crucial node in the trans-Saharan trade network. As trade flourished, so did cultural interactions. The early years of Empire Ghana witnessed the amalgamation of various ethnic groups, creating a vibrant tapestry of traditions, languages, and customs. The empire evolved as a melting pot where Sonic, Mande, and other ethnicities coexisted and contributed to the rich cultural mosaic. A defining feature of Empire Ghana's early years was its adept governance system. The empire established a centralized authority, with a ruler often referred to as the Ghana, or King of Gold. This central figure wielded significant power, overseeing not only political matters but also playing a crucial role in trade regulation and the redistribution of wealth. During this period, Empire Ghana experienced a profound religious transformation. Islam, introduced through contact with North African Berber and Arab traders, gained prominence. While traditional African belief systems persisted, Islam became a unifying force, influencing the empire's legal systems, social structures, and even architectural endeavors. As Empire Ghana emerged from its nascent years, it embarked on a trajectory of unprecedented growth, establishing itself as a dominant force in West Africa. The rise to power of this remarkable empire was marked by a confluence of economic prosperity, shrewd governance, and strategic positioning within the trans-Saharan trade network. Central to the ascendancy of Empire Ghana was its mastery of the gold and salt trade. The southern regions of the empire were rich in gold mines, making it a coveted source for the precious metal. As North African and Mediterranean traders sought to acquire gold for currency, ornaments, and trade, Ghana became the epicenter of this lucrative commerce. The gold salt trade routes, facilitated by camel caravans, traversed the Sahara Desert, linking the empire to distant markets. The symbiotic relationship between gold and salt was the economic engine that fueled Ghana's prosperity. Gold was exchanged for salt, a commodity essential for preserving food in the tropical climate of West Africa. The wealth accumulated through this trade not only enriched the empire but also solidified its status as a formidable economic power in the region. At the heart of Empire Ghana's rise was its adept governance system. The empire embraced a centralized authority led by a powerful ruler, often referred to as the Ghana, or King of Gold. This central figure played a pivotal role in maintaining political stability, regulating trade, and overseeing the equitable distribution of wealth. Administratively, Empire Ghana demonstrated remarkable innovation. The empire was divided into provinces, each governed by local leaders responsible for enforcing the laws and regulations set by the central authority. This hierarchical structure allowed for effective governance over the vast territories under Ghana's influence. Empire Ghana's strategic positioning contributed significantly to its rise. Situated between the Sahara Desert and the forested regions to the south, the empire controlled key trade routes. Its capital, Kumbisala, became a bustling hub where traders from diverse regions converged, fostering cultural exchange and economic activity. Diplomacy played a crucial role in Ghana's rise to power. The empire maintained stable relations with neighboring states, negotiated trade agreements, 
and strategically navigated the complex web of alliances and rivalries in the region. This diplomatic finesse contributed to the longevity and influence of Empire Ghana. Empire Ghana was home to a mosaic of ethnic groups, each contributing to the rich cultural fabric of the empire. The Saning people were foundational to Ghana's identity, but the empire's inclusive nature allowed for the coexistence of various ethnicities such as Mande, Wolof, and others. This diversity was not a source of division but rather a strength that enriched the socio-cultural landscape. The fusion of cultures was particularly evident in Kumbi Sala, where traders, scholars, and artisans from different regions mingled. The city's markets, streets, and public spaces were a testament to the cross-cultural exchanges that defined daily life in Empire Ghana. Empire Ghana underwent a profound religious transformation with the widespread adoption of Islam. While traditional African belief systems persisted, Islam became a unifying force. The rulers and elite embraced the new faith, influencing not only religious practices but also shaping legal systems, social structures, and educational pursuits. The coexistence of Islam and traditional beliefs resulted in a unique syncretism. This blend of religious practices fostered a sense of tolerance and inclusivity, allowing different communities to maintain their cultural and spiritual traditions. Kumbisala emerged as a center of intellectual pursuit and learning. Scholars from across the empire and beyond gathered to exchange knowledge, contributing to the flourishing of arts, sciences, and literature. The written word gained prominence, and Arabic became a language of scholarship and administration. The empire's commitment to education extended to the provinces, where local leaders often patronized scholars and encouraged the pursuit of knowledge. This emphasis on education not only elevated the intellectual standing of Empire Ghana but also laid the groundwork for the preservation of its cultural heritage. The architectural landscape of Empire Ghana reflected both indigenous styles and the influence of Islamic art. Kumbisala boasted grand mosques, palaces, and markets, showcasing the empire's prosperity and cultural sophistication. The use of mud brick, a prevalent material in the region, was combined with intricate geometric patterns and calligraphy, creating a distinctive architectural aesthetic. Artistic expression in Empire Ghana extended beyond architecture to include sculpture, pottery, and textile arts. Skilled artisans produced intricate works that adorned both public spaces and private residences, attesting to the empire's appreciation for beauty and craftsmanship. The decline of Empire Ghana marked the end of an era characterized by economic prosperity, cultural synthesis, and political stability. While the exact reasons for the empire's decline are multifaceted and interconnected, the gradual unraveling of its dominance can be attributed to a combination of internal challenges, external pressures, and shifting dynamics in the West African region. Empire Ghana faced internal challenges that strained its cohesive governance structure. As the empire expanded, maintaining control over vast territories became increasingly complex. Local leaders in the provinces gained more autonomy, leading to power struggles and internal conflicts. The erosion of centralized authority weakened the empire's ability to respond effectively to external threats. Neighboring states, eager to fill the power vacuum left by Ghana's internal strife, posed significant external pressures. The Almoravid invasion in the 11th century, led by Islamic militants from North Africa, further weakened empire Ghana. While the Almoravids sought to spread Islamic orthodoxy, their incursion disrupted trade routes and destabilized the region. Simultaneously, the rise of other West African states, such as the Mali Empire, contributed to the diminishing influence of Ghana. The competition for control over key trade routes redirected commerce away from Ghana, hastening its economic decline. The Trans-Saharan trade routes, once the lifeblood of Empire Ghana, experienced shifts that marginalized the empire. New trade routes emerged, diverting commerce away from Ghana's domains. Additionally, advancements in navigation techniques opened maritime routes, bypassing the need for overland trade. These changes diminished Ghana's role as a trading hub, leading to a decline in economic prosperity. Environmental factors also played a role in the decline of Empire Ghana. Desertification in the Sahel region, where Ghana was situated, contributed to the deterioration of agricultural lands. As the environment became less conducive to sustaining large populations, the empire faced challenges in maintaining food security and supporting its burgeoning populace. Excavations in the regions once governed by Empire Ghana have yielded a myriad of artifacts that provide insights into the empire's material culture. 
From intricately designed pottery and tools to remnants of grand structures, each discovery contributes to a deeper understanding of Ghana's economic, social, and artistic dimensions. Trade artifacts, the remnants of trading posts, marketplaces, and caravan routes speak volumes about the economic prowess of Empire Ghana. Archaeologists have uncovered artifacts related to the gold and salt trade, shedding light on the intricacies of trans-Saharan commerce. Architectural remains, the architectural marvels of Kumbi Sala, the capital of Empire Ghana, have left enduring traces excavations have revealed the foundations of grand mosques, palaces, and markets, showcasing the empire's sophisticated construction techniques and aesthetic sensibilities. Everyday artifacts, common items used by the inhabitants of Empire Ghana, such as pottery, tools, and personal adornments, provide a glimpse into the daily lives of the people. These artifacts offer valuable clues about societal structures, cultural practices, and technological advancements. While archaeological discoveries offer a tantalizing glimpse into the past, preserving these treasures poses significant challenges. Urbanization, agricultural expansion, and natural processes threaten the integrity of archaeological sites. Climate change and desertification further exacerbate the risks to the preservation of Ghana's cultural heritage. Balancing the imperative for economic development with the need to protect archaeological sites requires careful planning and collaboration. Governments, local communities, and international organizations must work together to establish conservation strategies that safeguard the integrity of these historical sites while allowing for sustainable development. Preservation efforts extend beyond physical artifacts to include the intangible cultural heritage of Empire Ghana. Initiatives aimed at documenting oral histories, traditional practices, and indigenous knowledge contribute to a holistic understanding of the empire's legacy. Cultural heritage management involves engaging local communities in the preservation process. Empowering communities to take ownership of their heritage fosters a sense of pride and ensures that preservation efforts align with the values and needs of the people. Tourism can be a double-edged sword for archaeological sites. On one hand, it provides valuable revenue for preservation efforts and raises awareness about the historical significance of these sites. On the other hand, unregulated tourism can contribute to wear and tear, vandalism, and the illicit trade of artifacts. Efforts to promote responsible tourism and educational programs are essential. Guided tours, educational outreach, and interpretative centers help visitors appreciate the cultural and historical significance of Empire Ghana while fostering a sense of responsibility for its preservation. Empire Ghana's historical significance transcends national borders. International collaboration in archaeological research, preservation, and education fosters a global understanding of West Africa's past. Collaborative efforts ensure that the lessons learned from Empire Ghana contribute to the collective knowledge of humanity. The story of Empire Ghana is a captivating narrative that unfolds across the sands of West Africa, leaving an indelible mark on the region's history and cultural identity. From its enigmatic origins to the zenith of its economic prowess and the subsequent decline, the tale of Empire Ghana is a testament to the ebb and flow of civilizations. In the sands of history, Empire Ghana remains a timeless testament to the resilience, creativity, and interconnectedness of human civilizations. As we carry the lessons of Ghana forward, we embark on a collective journey of understanding, appreciation, and preservation, ensuring that the echoes of this once mighty empire continue to resonate across the tapestry of time.